Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, today we're going to be changing the left rear hub on the 01 Aztec um, because uh, I do believe this could be the culprit for my analog traction and my brake warning malfunctions up front. Um, we did scan and there are codes for this particular speed sensor which are built into the hub so if you want to change the speed sensor on this particular vehicle you need to change out the hub um, so that's what we're going to do now I got the, the, the tire up off the ground already and uh, if we rotate it it actually looks like it's spinning pretty well um, I do hear a slight a slight grind in there a little bit but that could also possibly be the, uh, the brake drum. Um, I don't know what the condition of these rear drums are, but um, I don't know, this looks like it's, it's rolling pretty good. So um, hopefully, you know, the, uh, the sensor isn't really the issue. Hopefully there's not like a wiring issue or something that is contributing to this particular wheel. But just as a I guess precaution we're going to change them anyway. It's probably best that I do change them because with 170,000, almost going on 171,000 now actually. We're, we're getting close to 171 since the car has been on the road. But um, yeah, I don't know when these were changed, if these ones in the back are still original. According to the Carfax, the two up front I do believe have been changed at one time. Uh, but they'll probably need to be changed at some point also but um, we're gonna start with this one and then maybe eventually I'll change the other side um, but as of right now this is the wheel that is throwing codes for the ABS and traction issue and uh, as far as the brake light uh, I don't have any issues with fluid level um, the car thinks the parking brake is on I don't know if that's because the wheel sensor is picking up speed so low compared to the other wheels it thinks the parking brake might be engaged I don't know if that's the case or if the brakes are so bad back here maybe it's telling me that you know it's time to change the the drums and stuff so I don't know we're gonna do it um, it's it should be fairly easy on this particular car and I guess a lot of other GM cars also they they all may have a similar rear hub setup um, so I went with the CarQuest brand, uh, it was $45, um, and I, I went with the cheaper one only because, uh, you know, the car, the mileage of the car and such, uh, you know, there's, I'm not going to spend a hundred and some dollars on a hub, especially if it's not even really the problem. So we went with the CarQuest one. I have faith that it'll last, you know, <laughs> for a while. So let me show you real quick what uh, this hub is going to look like. This is, uh, by the way, CarQuest part number NT512237. So this is the hub that we're going to be putting on. These are the bolt-on style hubs. So it should be fairly easy to change compared to like the front hubs. But uh, this is what it is here. Here's the back of it. It's got a plate with four bolts that go through that connects toward like the axle, you know. Here's the plug-in for the analog and the speed sensor, which are in there. No noise, very smooth. So we'll see. We'll see what happens when we get the this one off and uh, go from there. Now, it was nice today, and I know that they were saying it was going to rain tonight. But it's not tonight yet, so hopefully the rain doesn't come now. And hopefully, again, this doesn't take too long. So let's get the wheel off. Um, gonna have to try to shake the drum off. I don't know when those were off last, but um, I'm, I'm going to assume that's not going to be that easy. That might take some time. And once the drum is off, we're gonna see our our hub uh, in full. So let's let's get to it. I can't find my Gorilla Grip gloves, or 
I don't know. I think that's what they're called, but I don't know. still pad so that's good uh, all right so there's our drum but actually I'm really surprised that there's that much pad on these rear drums I expect them to look a little worse so all right so there's pads anyway yeah I really hope this isn't leaking brake fluid or something Oh, maybe it is. Maybe, uh, maybe that's no good. Interesting. Yeah, it really doesn't feel like it's locked up or anything, or it's giving me a hard time. I don't really hear anything now, but if it says it's the speed sensor, then the speed sensor is going to go. <clears throat> Glad I took that off. I'm glad I saw that. So I wonder now what I'm going to have to do. I don't know if that's, that's probably not normal. My guess. Okay, so. Um, this wire right here, that is going to be our wire for the uh, sensor, which is plugged into the back of this. So it's, it's on these clips here. We're going to have to pull this out because once we take this hub off, this wire is going to move a little bit and we're going to have just a little bit of slack. That might be all right. We'll see. We'll see how far it comes out, but there's another clip here if we need to. And now we need to take our 13 millimeter socket and through these holes, there's a bolt there. Uh, there's one right there. There's another one down here and there's one over here. So like you saw in the one that I showed just four in a square, or rectangle fashion. You just gotta take your uh, socket, stick it through these holes, rotate this to get to the socket, and then from there we should be able to pull this out. Now I do believe this backing plate also comes off with those bolts out, so let's try not to move this backing plate when all the bolts are out, uh, trying to get the hub off. So uh, I guess let's begin. came out with the socket. Beautiful. Alright, from here, I don't know how easy this is going to come out. Probably not that easy. Uh, for how long it's been in there anyway. I don't know if I got to pry it. guys day number two I kind of ran out of uh, daylight last night trying to knock this hub off um, it's on there pretty good so got to get creative so I tried this on uh, this side up here I took one of the original bolts that hold on the back of the um, the back of the hub you know and uh, I put it back in and then I took my pliers here. I'm just trying to get creative because I'm just trying to uh, work with whatever I have. But I took my pliers and I kind of wedged them around the socket. So 
when you go to back the screw out and you're turning your, your ratchet, the screw is coming out, but the socket's going to push up against your, uh, the socket's going to push up against these pliers, and these pliers will push up against the outside of this hub. Therefore, it's kind of pushing it away from the backing plate. So it looks like this side, it started to do it. We're going to see if it works out on this side. Let's see if we can do this again. So I got the uh, screw in already. So I'm going to start backing the screw out, hold the pliers around the extension. And right about here, it's starting to push up against it. So hold the pliers a little tight. this point I don't have to touch the pliers anymore wasn't really wanted that what I wish I had was a, uh, a longer screw but I don't but it looks like it's working on the back side also so even though it flung off like that it did kind of pry it off somewhat Fortunately, my resources are limited. I was hoping maybe I can use like a larger socket as my, uh, you know, the push up against the plate here, but I don't have anything that's going to fit. So that's good enough there. Let's see if we can get it back here. a little bit. This one might be tricky because of the, I think that's the parking brake cable down below. So, it's around here. There we go. Okay, so the cylinder, or the whole uh, the whole backing plate, appears to be loose now. So the hub is probably you know, the hub is still a part of that apparently. All right, but we are making some progress. So, like I said, this whole assembly is also attached by those four bolts there so what I'm going to do I cannot believe that that won't come off I don't know if I can maybe try to hit it with the hammer a few more times if that's gonna help maybe not um, well I mean honestly I was gonna do this uh, I was going to do this wheel cylinder also since I seen how bad it was going to be. So I could always take the brake line off and, uh, you know, perhaps we could try to take it off with the entire assembly on the ground or something. But I don't want to lose a whole lot of brake fluid. Can't really just take that off. So at the back, that's the back of our hub right there. That white piece, our ABS wire, you can see plugs right into it there. You got your brake line, obviously. Be very careful of that. And uh, what, it, what would be nice at this point is if we can just try to knock it out from the back, but I don't think I can pull it out that far with all of these cables and lines attached to it. It's kind of might be kind of risky even if I can move it a little bit and try to pound it up against the end of the axle here maybe then I can try to actually get it off but 
That thing is really in there, man. All right, so what I was gonna do is I was gonna try to tear the brakes apart. Um, I started removing a couple of the top components, the, the spring that goes across the top, the parking brake adjuster, and the little parking brake, uh, the thing that turns the adjuster. Um, I was gonna take all this, probably gonna have to take all this off anyway to change this, but I might not have to. I might be able to carefully wedge the shoes out like this once I, uh, you know, get the new one. So I, I can wedge those probably, maybe. Kind of put something, I don't know. We'll figure it out. But um, what I'm gonna do now is I am going to disconnect the brake line uh, from this. That might help give me a little more play to get to the back of the, the thing. I brought my brake bleeding apparatus up here. It still has a lot of uh, somewhat fresh fluid in it from the uh, all the brake bleeding that we've had to do when we put our new lines on. Plus the, um, we're going to have to bleed this anyway, so I need it. Alright, so I got some line wrenches. Let's see what size this is going to be. Probably bigger than this. Oh, yeah, a lot bigger. I thought it was smaller than that. Let's see. Bigger than that? Wow. Nine sixteenths. Alright, so. We're going to carefully try to, uh, we're going to carefully try to crack this line off here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook the uh, hose up from my little brake bleeding thing. We'll hook the hose up and then that way hopefully we won't lose a whole lot of fluid. This is going good so far. Ugh, it really doesn't look too bad back there but Oh, there we go. Is it twisting the line? It is not twisting the line. Beautiful. All right. Okay, let's remove this bolt again. Let's see how far maybe we can pull this. Uh, assembly out now with that oh the line might not leak that bad only because uh, it's kind of sitting at an angle so it's going to drip a little bit oh, all right well there there's the back of the hub here's our ABS assembly which I'm now pulling how do we get that off two tabs two tabs on the side prime both hopefully there all right wiggle there we go all right hide that in there so it doesn't get brake fluid on it all right sweet so now we need to figure out how to knock the rest of that hub out of there Ooh, guys, I got brake fluid in a cut. Wow, that burns. Ooh, ooh, oh, I didn't want to do that. Can't get that on there. There we go. That fits. All right. All right, so now either the fluid's not going to leak as much or it's just going to keep it from making a mess. Breaking the sensor. Oh, well. Dang it, I wish I had the camera on. All right, so that seemed to work. Pounding on the back of it, it just, it just got knocked out. <laughs> and ooh, it won't turn anymore, because we destroyed the back of it. Um, I found the contact part of the sensor 
the inner inner contact which would be right here and if you look they look kind of corroded there's some green and stuff from the inside so yeah this the sensor probably was the issue I looked at the wiring harness here inside the uh, axle it's clean which is good didn't see any crusties on it yep all right so the hub is off one one project down let's take this uh, let's take this uh, thing off of here um, we already disconnected our line obviously so the next thing we gotta do is there's two small bolts those are small hopefully they'll open or come off my first guess is maybe an eight. Oh, sweet first try Yikes. Yeah, I didn't think that was going to be easy. What I might have to do is maybe put this back up on here for now. I'm going to tap it with the hammer very lightly. thing says no all right now we're getting somewhere with the, the little eight mils in the back those are tiny I honestly don't know if we have to reuse these or not carefully try to move this brake line over we definitely don't need to be smacking that Hammer trick again. Oh, it's coming. There we go. All right, cool. There we go. I'm gonna give it a little tap. Well, more taps, perhaps. There we go. Oh, that's not bad. Okay. Woo! Gross. All right. So now we gotta go to the parts store and grab a few things. I'll see you guys in a bit. And we're back. So, uh, $25 later, get it. There we, go. we have our wheel cylinder. Got to reuse the screws, which I kind of figured uh, was going to happen. So, before we put that in, uh, I'm going to spray some brake cleaner in this vicinity. So I'm gonna put this in here because I don't want to get that wiring harness. I don't want to get that soaked in brake clean. So we're just gonna do that. We're gonna spray around. Try to get some of that gunk out of there. So we got our brake clean. Erico's preferred can if I'm not mistaken. I don't have anything to catch this, but you know what? It is what it is, because my driveway's already ruined. So, I'm just gonna spray it around. Oh, look at all that gunk that came off of that spring there. This stuff's cold. And don't forget, it stings. This out. One thing I forgot to pick up. Uh, oh, anti seize. I was going to put anti seize on the back of this uh, new bearing in case it's going to come back out, but it is what it is. 
didn't think it was going to be that difficult. I mean, I knew it was going to be difficult because of how old that thing is and it was sitting in there, you know. And, but it is what it is. We got it out. Try to clean around that surface there. It's not too bad. Hopefully I won't have to take this this new one out, you know. Wheel bearing that is. This wheel cylinder really isn't that bad. So here is our new wheel cylinder. Nice and shiny. Take this plug out here. That's where our brake line is going to go. Now before I tighten this down, that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to fish it through the hole. Maybe. <laughs> and then the... Uh, I'm going to kind of just hand tighten the, the brake line into the back um, before we, we buckle it down. Okay, there we go. So those are in. Not too terrible. So like I said, before we buckle it down, let's try and get our line in. Okay, so that took a little, little bit of messing around to do, but that should be good. Um, I already put our, our little eight millimeter screws in the back here, so all we have to do is tighten them, and then we'll tighten our line. The screws are not very thick, so I'm not going to tighten them too tight. I mean, they're going to be snug, but I don't want to over tighten them. Because then you've got a problem. And I don't want any more problems. Okay. All right. New wheel cylinders in place, now we just gotta tighten the line with our, what was it, 9 16 When you put the line in, make sure it doesn't cross thread. Make sure that you snug this up pretty good. That's pretty tight. Now for the grand finale, which should have been the only thing on the video, but didn't turn out that way. And that is our uh, our hub. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna put the rest of the uh, brake stuff on. You know, once we uh, kind of finish this up. So. Uh, I already took the one screw out holding on this backing plate. We'll take this one off now, so our plate is back to being loose again. And let's see, do I have anything I can kind of stick through there just to, yeah, just to hold it. Oh, it's, it's all right, it's not going anywhere. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is connect our, our wire. I did unhook the one clip all the way over here so it gives us a little more play, as you can see, to hook that connector back up. And when it comes off, it doesn't look like there was a uh, specific way it went on. Make sure all the crud's off of it. Uh, oh, there is a certain way. Okay, so it does have a, a one way. So it should slide on like this, if I'm not mistaken. 
There we go. Alright, so the sensor's plugged in. Now we gotta fish it through there. Pick this up, slide it in. And we're gonna mess with it a little bit, of course. Alright, so now. I don't have a torque spec on these, so we're just going to snug them up as best as we can. But I don't think this is going to be a problem. Where are you? There you are. <sighs> All right. She ain't going nowhere. Really hope that this fixes those lights. I don't know if we have to reset the light or if it'll automatically go off. But I guess we'll find out. That's it. All right, so there we go. So I got all of the upper brake components back on, just as uh, they were before I took them off. And uh, that's it. So now we have to remove the bleeder cap, put my little homemade bleeding apparatus on there, and we just have to bleed this line out now and get this cylinder full of uh, full of fluid and then of course from there the wheel goes back on um, you got to put the drum back on obviously to, to do the bleeding because you can't just have the brakes open so I gotta put the drum on and then I will hook up my hose and we will start uh, bleeding see if we actually notice a difference in the uh, how the brakes feel don't forget to put your wire back in the harness where the little tape marks are this one's going to be a pain because of this thing here, but this one can go in, see, maybe. They're just little prongs, like little tabs, you just kind of wedge them in there. Maybe with that one, if we can get that one, nah, yeah. We'll get it, we'll get it eventually. There's also one for that brake line, which is snapped back into the place also, into place. So, all right, let's let's get this on and check to see if we're leaking. Hopefully, we're not. All right, so I've actually had this sitting here like this for about a minute or so. I was looking for my little eight millimeter to close it off once we were done. We can already see actually it's pushing fluid through, so it's uh, it's kind of like gravity bleeding at the moment. Uh, that's still very wet back there. I hope it's not fresh. I don't see bubbles though, so. There'd probably be bubbles if it was leaking like that. It's probably just left over from trying to push it on. All right, well, first off, first thing we wanna do is make sure we're topped off on fluid. And actually it looks like the uh, reservoir is down a little bit. Not not too dramatically, but it's it's down. So we wanna make sure that that is full because if we get air low enough in there, then we're probably gonna have to bleed all these lines, and I'm not bleeding all these lines. Also make sure you use the recommended fluid as specified by your cap and or owner's manual. All right, it's show time. Let's see. Let's see how well this works out.
All right, so that took a little longer. I kept getting these little little air bubbles in, and uh, I think what was happening was the um, the bleed screw was extremely loose, so I kept getting air coming in through the the bleed valve threads. I think so. I had to keep on tightening it up enough, and I think I got it. Um, the drum there seems to be a little more, you know, resistance with it, so I'm pretty sure. It's finally got some pressure. The brakes feel okay. Um, how low did I get? Cause I didn't check it. Oh, it's, it's not too bad, but we're gonna add some before we get more air everywhere else. Let's start it up and see if the ABS light's on. I don't know how quick it'll go off or if it's even gonna go off, if it's gonna, you know, uh, What's the word? If I need to have it reset, we'll just turn the key over. All right, so they're still on. So I'm assuming that it either needs reset or this isn't gonna fix the issue. Battery's gonna die. A little washer fluid. Huh. All right, so let me turn this stuff off. Uh, I'll get the tire back on. Battery's on. The camera's gonna die, so I want to make this quick. And we'll take it for a drive and see what happens. All right, we, we've been on the road for like 20 minutes, and this brake warning has not come back yet. So I'm pretty sure that that issue is corrected at this time. Uh, I had a feeling after a while that that's what it was gonna be. The the bearing looked or seemed to spin okay, but that. As we've seen once we broke that, that sensor open, it looked like the uh, in, inside pins were all corroded and such. So yeah, we, we weren't getting any kind of reading on that wheel, but we are now, so I'm pretty sure that our brake light issue is done. And uh, I'll, I'll see if I can have somebody reset the analog light, uh, and we'll see if, if that corrects that issue, and if not, then so be it. 430 miles on the clock so far, that's what we've put on it. Hooray. One thing about the tech that I've always noticed, even when I had my first one, is when it's windy out, and today it's windy, it handles rough. So, it's just, I don't know. It's because of how high it is or something. The brakes are spongy still, but they feel okay, like they don't really feel like they're not working or anything. She got her pep. She's got her pep. Alright guys, so that's it. Um, it seems to be fine. Uh, no brake warning at all. Um, the transmission doesn't seem to even smell as, as hot as it has been. Uh, you know, I've been kind of checking on the fluid and stuff. It's still at max level. Um, but it seems I don't really notice it smelling hot um, as much anyway. Um, now the brakes could be spongy still because maybe the other wheel uh, cylinder is bad in the other wheel. So at some point I'm probably going to have to tear that open, take a look and see what's going on in there. Possibly end up replacing that one as well. So that could also be a possibility um, that that cylinder is also no good. Uh, it's a highly... It's a high <laughs> uh, possibility. Um, but that's it. Uh, she seems to be okay. The job really wasn't too bad. Uh, trying to get that that old hub bearing out was the worst of it. Um, if I had like an air hammer or something, maybe that would have helped a little bit. But once we got the entire assembly off, which I feel like I shouldn't have had to do, but then you can really hit it from behind and it just, it just shot right out once I got it good enough. Um, I'm also, I don't know why I have a little washer fluid because I really haven't been, oh, you know what? I see a stain in the driveway. I think I'm leaking washer fluid, guys. I think my reservoir's leaking because I can see the blue in the driveway. Huh. Eh. Leak? What? Oh, it is. It's leaking from the very bottom. Oh man. Oh man.
I don't want to tear that back out. I don't want to do that again. Actually, I think I don't think that was that bad. I don't remember, but it's leaking at the bottom. Well, guys, my camera died as I was finishing this. Oh well, so we'll finish it with the phone. But yeah, so that's leaking. Uh, man, I I don't know. It must be a slow leak because. I don't know. I'm just, I'm not going to be worried about it at the moment. We'll deal with that another day. Uh, how's our brake fluid look? Still, still full. So that's it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, you know, give it a thumbs up, like, you know, comment, subscribe. Uh, check out teespring.com slash stores slash Mike's Vehicle Spotlight for all of your MVS and vlog merchandise. And that's all that I have for today, guys. So I got some stuff to clean up and I'm gonna call it a day. Sorry that this video was kind of all over the place, but we got some stuff done. We made some minor improvements and I'm sure there's many more to come. So I'll see you guys next time. Thank you again so much for watching. Take care.